Recently, you've probably gotten sticker shock from some of the price tags in the news. An unlimited bond buying program, $1.5 trillion in short term repo loans, and a $2 trillion stimulus plan. Considering the entire budget for a federal government this year was supposed to be $4.8 trillion, I think it's safe to say we're not coming in under budget. Today I'm going to try to answer a question normally reserved for Bernie Sanders. How the heck are we paying for all this? Now first I want to split these stories up into two categories. Congressional actions, meaning the stimulus, and Federal Reserve actions, which is everything else. So let's start by talking about the Congressional Stimulus Package, because it'll take about one sentence to summarize its funding. We're going to borrow it all by selling long term bonds on the market. That'll probably get picked up by the Federal Reserve in their bond buying binge. Yup, I guess you could say that the federal government is in the corner stimulating itself right now. Maybe the clearest example of an executive branch circle jerk I can imagine. So now to the much more complicated question. Where is the Federal Reserve getting all their money? Short answer, they don't get it, they create it. Now I know some of you are probably thinking right now, like I did when I started this episode, only the Treasury Department can print money. And you're right. But there's no printing involved here, it's all digital. I could get on Venmo right now and give you a thousand dollars without anybody exchanging any printed money. Yes, this is incredibly confusing, but bear with me. In the early days of central banking, money creation was a physical reality. New paper notes and new metallic coins would be crafted, imprinted with anti-fraud devices, and subsequently released to the public. Central banks have since become much more technologically creative. The Fed figured out that money doesn't have to be physically present to work in an exchange. Because of this, they can literally spend unlimited money on assets, because once you exit the physical realm, the only limitation is how fast you can type zeros. So alright, how does this work in practice? Well, when the Federal Reserve buys government securities or extends loans through its discount window, it simply pays by crediting the reserve accounts of the member banks through an accounting or book entry. In case member banks wish to convert their reserve balances into hard cash, well then the Fed provides them dollar bills. Now, Based on this explanation, this might all seem like the dealings that go on in the back room's back room. An easy way to think about it though, is to picture the Federal Reserve as a bank for banks. Take for me example, I don't carry around my entire life savings in cash. I keep some of it in a checking account that I can call on if I spend all my cash. Similarly, banks have reserve accounts at the Federal Reserve. Huh, maybe that's why they call it that. Where they store their reserves. Each of the 12 Federal Reserve banks keeps an inventory of cash on hand to meet the needs of the depository institutions in its district. The metaphor goes even deeper than this though. If there's a run on my bank where everybody tries to get their money out at once, well that bank's going to go to the federal government for a bailout. Similarly, if there's a run on the Federal Reserve where all the banks are trying to get their reserves out at once, well that Federal Reserve is also going to go to the federal government and get them on the horn. Additions to that supply come directly from two divisions of the Treasury Department that produce the cash. The Bureau of Engraving and Printing, which prints currency, and the United States Mint, which makes coins. Yep, we took the scenic route to get there, but it didn't take too long to end up face to face with the guy running the printer. The Federal Reserve considers itself a bank to the point where their balance sheet refers to its money owed to the banks as a deposit. And as of the 20th, they were holding about three and a half trillion dollars worth of deposits. Now before I leave this episode, I want to give you a bit of a more specific idea what the financing of two Federal Reserve actions we're talking about a lot look like. Repo loans and asset purchases. First, repo loans. Into today they were offering overnight operations of $175 billion overnight. They now are offering a $500 billion three month operation and a $500 billion one month operation. If you total everything that they're offering, it's well over a trillion dollars. Eh, 
It's well over a trillion digital dollars. If you think about what a repo loan is at its core, it's the Federal Reserve giving another bank an overnight loan to prove that the other bank has enough reserves to stay above the Federal Reserve's reserve requirements. The bank doesn't actually need those billions of dollars, they just need the Federal Reserve to say, sure, there are billions of dollars there. This, I don't know, pencil is worth $10 billion. Put it in your reserves and give it back to me tomorrow. Good? Of course, this raises the obvious question, uh, what if there's actually a financial crisis and it turns out the banks needed billions of dollars in overnight reserves? I mean, the Federal Reserve has some cash, but in case of a $50 billion emergency, you're gonna wanna speak to the manager. The Treasury is using the Exchange Stabilization Fund as a backstop to cover any losses the Federal Reserve may incur through lending programs created to cope with the crisis. So if you actually need the money fast, don't waste your time calling the Federal Reserve, call the Treasury Department and Steve Mnuchin instead. Of course, this form of digital credit is easy to do when it comes in the form of overnight loans, get it back to me in the morning, but how does it work when you're actually exchanging digital credits for a tangible asset? Well, it's the exact same concept. The asset purchases are done by the trading desk at the New York Federal Reserve Bank. No funds change hands, but the central bank issues a credit to the bank's reserves as it buys the securities. Again, the central bank is acting as a central bank. We bought your treasury bond and we put the money in your savings account. Feel free to take it out at any time you want, but if you want to take out all your cash at once, well, you're going to need to speak to our manager, Steve Mnookin, so we can fire up those printers. So that's exactly how we're paying for these multiple trillion dollars worth of stimulus. Thank you, and that's all I have to say about that. Hello YouTube, I'd like to thank my patrons for helping me put out my videos. If you want to support independent nonpartisan news looking into the overlooked, join this growing list of exceptional individuals by clicking that link in the description. Also remember to subscribe and ring that bell so that freedom will continue to ring. Give me a thumbs up if you like what you saw, and lastly, as always, thank you for watching.